So we were Sean Christopher. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing in London? Chilling, man. You're chilling like a villain. <laughs> yeah, having a good time out here. You just popped out of nowhere. It's like, let me ask you this. Is this your first video interview in the UK? Yeah. Let's see. Very first. Very, very first video interview in the UK. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, like, when you're like a star and you look back look on your back career, you'd be like, there's this Asian guy who came to my hotel and interviewed me. That's wow. Like, yeah. It's not bad. One word to describe Sean Christopher. Uh, one word. Uh, amazing. I'll have to say that. I think that would be a cool word. <laughs> right. You. You graduated high school at 16. Mm -hmm. You majored in political science. Mm -hmm. You're like uber clever, is that a word? I don't even know. <laughs> See, I'm not that clever, yeah. You've done all those things in, in your education. Mm -hmm. Why the hell would you want to rap? You could be making so much money off your own talent, just intellectually. Mm -hmm. Why the hell would you want to rap? It's just something that I couldn't shake, man. Like, when I was in college, like, I. I couldn't stop writing music. Like, okay. I would always write music and I always had a passion for it. And, you know, just like you said, I could do it with so many other things, but I love this. Like, I love music. Like, I live and breathe music. I live and breathe hip hop. I live and breathe rap. And I think that, you know, I think that, you know, God chooses people just to, 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 to have certain roles in life and say certain things. And I think that my role was to be like an orator and to, you know, and channel it through, through music. You know what I'm saying? So I think that that was my that was my purpose. That's why I can't shake it. When was the first time you met Sean Christopher, the artist, and what was that experience like for you? Mm, wow. I think that um, after college, you know, I was just kind of just making music. I didn't even really have a name. Like yeah. I was just kind of just making music, and uh, I would just look at. You know, it was funny. It was kind of like <laughs> this is crazy. You know, <laughs> You know when September 11th happened back in the States and everything yeah. like that. And I was watching CNN and they, uh, they spelled, they spelled talk about this too. Um, they, they asked Ja Rule like, about it, right? And I'm watching, I'm like, why the fuck are we talking to Ja Rule? About September 11th. And, and then I'm thinking like, his name is Jeffrey Atkins, right? And he's on CNN, I call him Ja Rule, a grown man. They don't even call him by his real name. I was like, dude, that fucking sucks. Like, you would never be able to be called Mr. Atkins or like Jeffrey or whatever. Your name is Ja Rule for the rest of your life. From that moment, I was like, yo, I want to be called by my, by my fucking name. Wow. Like, so that's how it yeah, came about. I oh. I don't, I don't ever want to be called like little something or something short. I was watching yeah. this dude and I was like, yo, I don't. I, I want my name. You know, I want, when I'm 40 years old, I want people to ever, because still calling me by my moniker or whatever. I want people to call me by my name. Yeah. So when that happened, I was like, Sean Chris, like that was, you know, that was easy. You know, that's a fair point, because I do the same. I go by my own, what they call government name, right? <laughs> I just name. go by my government name. I don't need to put no moniker on it, because yeah. I feel when you're in a certain position, like a scene, if you're in a professional environment like that, or corporate environment like that, I would love them to know me by well, my name. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because because that's, that's you. Yep. Your name is who you are. Yep. So now we're getting all intellectual now. What's your, um, what's your creative process? Because I heard you're literally a genius. Like, literally. So what's your creative process in writing hooks, in writing bridges, in writing verses? Is it like writing an essay? Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's similar to writing an essay because I, I write, like, different drafts of verses. Then I'll go back and i say, okay, I like this part of this verse, I like this part of this verse, and I like this part of this verse. And I'll see how we can stretch it into one, rather than just writing one thing. Because the same thing if you write an essay, man, your first draft it would never be as good as your final draft. So if you just write a verse and you don't really critique it, it can get a whole lot better, you know what I'm saying? So with verses, I write a few. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I kind of go and critique it back, you know what I'm saying? And then when it comes to hooks, Let's start you know, I don't, Let's I don't write hooks down, down because it's like if I can't remember them, how can I ask someone else to remember? Them? Uh, so, so I just kind of have the beat going. I just kind of mumble stuff and really try to get the chorus going. And like, boom, this is the chorus, and I, and, you know, I run with it. But I definitely write down my verses because. You know, there's just there's there's nothing that that can ever replace a pen hitting a piece of paper. Like you can use a BlackBerry, you can use an iPad, you can use a computer, you can on your mind whatever. But when a pen actually hits a paper and you're writing it out, like nothing beats that. There's something special it about is. that. There's like, something special like, you know, about that. When I was that. in college, and I, I would, sometimes I would try to start my first draft by writing it on on the computer, just by you know mm. blank page, start on the computer. 
but it's not the same feel as writing it on a paper and then transferring it to the computer. Like okay. something about that pen to the pad, right. man. Like, just there is there is there is something special about that. It's yeah. almost like it's set in stone. Yeah. And you can't change That's it. That's that. Not yeah. even tip X or anything that can take it away. It's, it's hangover video. Okay. Great video. Thank you. Brilliant. <laughs> but when was your f worst hangover? Your first hang? Your worst worst hangover? Oh, worst. Hangover. Oh, yeah. Man. Message for the kids. Your man. worst hangover. <laughs> I was in New York. I was in New York at a club. I don't remember the name of the club. And I was so drunk, man. <laughs> and our, our hotel was in New Jersey. Right. So, which is not that far away. It's about like, the hotel was like 15, 20 minutes away. So, I don't remember leaving the club. I don't remember driving back to Jersey. And all I remember was waking up in the hotel and feeling like, like shit. Like it was horrible. Closed the blinds. I didn't leave the, the hotel room. I, that is a hotel building. I didn't leave the room for 24 hours. I just sat and drank juice and I just laid down. Like we, I didn't go anywhere. My homeboy was with me. He was fucked up. He didn't leave. <laughs> It was like, it was like, I was like really, I kept asking him like, yo, are we fucked up, bro? Like, am, are we really feeling like, like I was dying inside? I was like, y'all never doing this again. I'm done with hard liquor. I'm done. Yo, that was like the worst, that was like the worst shit ever. I was done with alcohol a long time. I don't drink, you see. That's I don't drink. I was done a long time ago. Yeah, don't drink. Don't see, message for the kids. Now, your messages in your songs, what you represent as an artist, minus that, you know, transgression there. You're gonna be a role model by default. Mm -hmm. But not only are you making good music and have the responsibility to the music, then you have a responsibility to the people that follow you as a role model. Surely that must be difficult. And people are gonna judge you quicker, so how are you gonna deal with that? You know, I think that, you know, that's, that's something that I've, that's something that I've always kind of dealt with. You know, I have a, a, a eight year old sister and she, she looks at me like I can do no wrong. Like I'm just a superhero. And there's certain things that I don't, I don't allow her to listen to, which I think I don't want her to be around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And but at the same time, like being a role model, like I have to understand. Like people have to understand that I'm, I'm a human at the same time. You know, that's why I look at the Tupac Shakur so much because he showed different sides of him. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. was a really good role model, but he didn't show every side of him. There's so many things that were locked in the closet that we never knew. Like, a lot of people didn't know that he smoked cigarettes. Yeah, I didn't. You know, he smoked cigarettes when he was shot. When he was shot, he was laying down. He asked them, can you take the cigarettes out of my jacket pocket? I don't want them to find me with the cigarettes on. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And so, this, so, and so like, with me, like, I don't ever want there to be a part of me that is not shown. I don't right. want to be a person. You know, so I understand I have to, you know, as a role model, you do certain things that you can and cannot do, but at the, at the same time, I want people to love me as a person and understand that I'm going to fuck up. You know, I'm going to say things wrong. I'm going to do a lot of things, but what makes us human is that we understand our mistakes and we, we either apologize or we fix it. Yeah, I mean, we move on. Like, we learn. You live and you, you learn know? kind of thing. And, and that's why, you know, that's why, like, if you ask me to choose between Martin King and Malcolm X, I always say Malcolm X because... We, we see him in the very beginning gambling, running around with women, drinking, he gets arrested, and then he finds the Nation of Islam, and then he, he sees a lot of faults within his his um, his actual sector of the Nation of Islam. So now he's, his last portion of his life, he was actually exiting. Yeah. You know, and so, and so from, from his death, from when he began, you know, he did a lot of things wrong, but he understood. At the end of the day, he understood what he did wrong. He was trying to make things right before, they, before he was assassinated. The project, you told, told me your project. This project, man, you know, I haven't really told anybody about it, but the, the title that I'm working with right now is called, um, it's called uh, Silent Films for the Blind. Wow. And the reason why I, I, I was having a conversation with my manager about it, the reason why, you know, if you take, if you take a, a, a blind person to a movie, they can still kind of understand what's going on because you know they, they hear the dialogue, everything, whatever. If you take them to a, a silent film, they don't know what's going on. And there's and it's so much artistic nature and so much artistic value in silent films that I, I feel that sometimes I make songs that are so artistic and so deep that it just goes right over people's heads. It's kind of like, it's kind of like you just showed a silent film to a blind person. It's right. like you just put so much work into this film 
and then you brought a blind person in the theater, and he's like, all right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, we're so hard in this film. He doesn't even appreciate the shit. <laughs> he can't. It's not his fault. He, he really can't. And so that's that's kind of what, what this, this project was. It's like, I'm really, I really want to be artistic. I, I really want to, you know, focus on writing songs. Like, my whole career, I really want to focus on writing. You know, I have records that I'm a rapper. I have yeah. records where I have plus nine. But at the end of the day, you know, my favorite records are songs yes. where... You, you can't switch the verses with other verses of other songs that won't make sense. So this this new this the new project later this year, I want every song to be a complete record. Nice. And you know, to really go into detail where, you know, like if it, the same way you ask the director, yo, tell a story without any dialogue with visuals, I'm gonna tell a story with just dialogue and no visuals. You know what I'm saying? So that's kinda what this this new project would be about. We're we're working now. You know, we're still promoting you know my, my current project, but we're working now. Good on on the, on the next project. Wanted to want to be.